Hi, I'm recording this video in a market where the demand, the demand for office space, at least in some buildings, in some markets, is soft. It's soft. And uh, that is leading to a phenomenon where there are some tenants who would like to stay, they would like to stay in their space, uh, but perhaps they would like to lease less, you know, maybe half as much, sometimes maybe only 30% as much as what they're leasing. Uh, I'm recording this essentially post-pandemic, far enough post-pandemic, where people have realized that this, uh, you know, Zoom-enabled uh, work-from-home thing is real, and uh, office utilization rates generally across the country have returned to something like 45 to 50 percent of what they were pre-pandemic. And there's lots of businesses that are realizing that they could get by with a lot less space that they have. Now, some of these tenants have leases that are expiring right now, and those situations are not legally interesting. Uh, the tenant is not obliged uh, to renew the lease at all. And if they are intending to renew, they, the tenant has a lot of leverage to uh, renegotiate lower rents or less space. What this video is about is for a tenant who might have five years remaining on a lease, seven years remaining on a lease, eight years remaining on a lease, uh, and they need, it's in their economic best interest to reduce their rent perhaps by just renegotiating the rate lower or giving up space and thereby reducing uh, their rent uh, because they're not taking down so much space. So I'm trying to identify uh, the principles on which those negotiations occur. First principle, first principle is this. In, 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 order, for the tie, in order for the landlord to buy into keeping the tenant in the space, the landlord needs to believe that this tenant who's trying to renegotiate their lease is still the best tenant for the property. Because if they're not the best tenant for the property, then, and the tenant defaults on the lease, then the landlord will be able to uh, lease the property to somebody else, and, and uh, that somebody else will be a better tenant, that uh, somebody else will be a be better tenant, for maybe because they can afford to pay more than the tenant, not more than the lease rate, not more than the lease rate, but you know the tenant, the tenant could be uh, leasing the property for forty dollars a square foot, and want to renegotiate the uh, the price to twenty five dollars a square foot, and there might be a replacement tenant that could come in at thirty five dollars a square foot. Well, in that case, the tenant doesn't have much leverage to negotiate a lower price, so. The, the one, one thing that's uh, important is for the tenant to marshal evidence that they are the best tenant for the property. And you know among the things that tenants need to marshal uh, to try and demonstrate this are things like perhaps they have anchor tenant-like features. You know, they're the ones who generate uh, traffic uh, for the building. Uh, you know, maybe it's a, a big real estate brokerage company that brings in a lot of business that feeds a mortgage company tenant, that feeds a title company tenant, uh, et cetera, in the building. Um, another concept is, is the tenant needs to be prepared. The tenant who's trying to renegotiate the lease is, needs to be prepared to convince the landlord that the tenant has exhausted other alternatives, uh, such as subleasing, uh, such as assigning uh, a, a portion of the space to another tenant. Another thing uh, the tenant needs to be prepared to do is uh, uh, educate the landlord about what current market rates are. Because if current market rates for the space are $25 a foot, and the tenant is ne trying to re negotiate to reduce the rents from $40 a square foot down to 30, the tenant is making the case Yes, you will be taking a haircut, but you will not be taking a haircut as badly as you would take if you had to go back to the market. If you go out to the market, you get less than what we're offering uh, to pay you. And then other things are, when landlords do things like this, they want, they, they want to have some reason to think, they want to have some reason to believe that the tenant isn't going to come back in two or three years with another problem. 
So the tenant needs to be prepared to convince the, the, the landlord that there is the financial means to pay the renegotiated lower rent uh, for a long period of time and that the tenant won't be coming back uh, later. Uh, there is uh, another important concept, that was the first concept, concept number two, is the mere fact that the tenant wants to renegotiate the lease doesn't mean that the landlord has an obligation to lower the price. The landlord can enforce the lease against the tenant. So part of what the tenant is trying to do is convince the landlord that the tenant is a turnip in the sense that you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. And ideally, there's lots of different variations on this, but ideally the tenant is what lawyers call a single purpose entity, an LLC or an S corporation or a corporation. And only, only that tenant is liable on the lease, the entity not the human beings associated with that. In other words, the hope is, is that there are not personal guarantees. If there are personal guarantees for, uh, from humans, uh, it, it doesn't mean those personal guarantees have power. You know, the personal guarantees might be from people who have no assets, who have been crushed uh, by this or that event, uh, but you need to, be prepared to marshal if you're on the tenant side that this is lowering the rent is the best bad option to keep the best flawed tenant in uh, the property. Now, if you're on the landlord side of this, uh, or if you're on the tenant side of this, if there are personal guarantees, they need to be scrutinized because sometimes we see these personal guarantees that are like capped, the, the personal guarantee is capped at a dollar amount, or perhaps the personal guarantee is capped and it only covers six months of rent. Uh, another thing that we see is the what the personal guarantee says is the tenant is guaranteeing repayment of the tenant finish obligation of the landlord. Well, that's not the same thing as guaranteeing the whole lease. So those things need to be uh, scrutinized. Uh, another thing is, is that uh, in order for the liability to con be contained within this special purpose entity and not contaminate the human beings who are associated with this entity, the entity needs to have been following its corporate formalities. In other words, uh, you know, having separate insurance, filing separate uh, tax returns, having bank accounts that are separate from the human beings. We need to be clear that this this entity is not just really uh, an entity in name only and is actually acting as an alter ego for the humans who are involved in the entity. Uh, another, now we're on number three. The, an, a source of leverage uh, from some tenants, uh, uh, you know, there's some tenants out there where the, uh, the business that is leasing the space has the ability to pay the rent the way it is now, but it's causing people to abandon the company. So oftentimes uh, the uh, tenant is owned by humans uh, to the extent that the rent is above market, that is sucking money out of the profit of the entity. And so in the accounting practice or the brokerage practice or the mental health uh, professionals who are associating with each other, uh, people don't, even though they can pay it, even though they can pay it, it paying the above market rent tracks uh, from their bottom line. And so they start leaving. And of course, when you know 20 owners reduces to 17, that makes the remaining 17 nervous and 17 gets reduced to 13. And there can be what we call in the workout business a death spiral where it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You use that as leverage with the landlord. Hey, we need a rent reduction so that we can retain our talent uh, to, to maintain this place for the long term for us and for you, landlord. Okay, another source of leverage for the tenant, at least in situations where rents are holding, or going up, um, not 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 the situation I ha we have at the time we're recording this, but in situations where you know the tenant just has some hard luck and wants to get out of the lease, if rents have gone up, there's a concept in the law that landlords have an obligation to mitigate their damages. 
In other words, when the tenant defaults, when the tenant vacates, uh, suppose the tenant has a lease uh, uh, where they're obligated to pay rent at $30 a square foot and market rents are $35 a square foot. Well, the landlord doesn't, assuming you know there's no downtime and factoring and marketing costs, the landlord who's conscientious about finding a replacement tenant might not have any actual damages and might benefit from that. The landlord does not get to benefit by renting it to a replacement tenant for more and going after the defaulting tenant uh, for the rent payments that the defaulting tenant uh, didn't make. Okay, if you're the tenant in these situations, one of the things the landlord is, uh, might, might expect, might need in, as a uh, consideration for reducing the rent is more skin in the game from the tenants. The landlord wants to know this isn't gonna happen again. The landlord's gonna wanna know that if the market continues to soften, the tenant's not gonna be back. So more, t more skin in the game could look like personal guarantees. Uh, personal guarantees from people who weren't already personal guarantees. Uh, more security deposit, uh, et cetera. Be prepared tenant to deal with a request for a request for more skin in the game from the tenant side. Uh, one of the things you're trying to do on the tenant side to create leverage to get out of the lease is to be able to assert defaults, material defaults by the landlord under the lease. But your assertions of defaults are not gonna look very credible if the first time you're raising them in writing at least is, is uh, at why you're simultaneously asking the landlord to reduce the rent. No, they will seem less real unless you've been, you know, asking the landlord to fix the elevator, ask the landlord to fix the roof, um, you know, for for months before you ask for the rent reduction. Uh, one of the important considerations on the landlord's side is the tax consequences, the income tax consequences of losing the property in foreclosure. Um, we have situations right now where landlords uh, uh, have uh, a, a reason to um, do everything they can to lose the property in foreclosure. In addition to you know avoiding the stigma, in addition to avoiding liability and the personal guarantee, a foreclosure auction is treated very much like a sale of the property and in but in a, in, a, in a foreclosure auction, the seller generally does not receive any proceeds. They do not receive any proceeds, but they might end up owing the IRS a huge chunk of money because of what's called the recapture problem. Make sure if you're the owner of the building, you have talked to your CPA about the tax consequences of losing the property in foreclosure. Hey, what are the, what are the leverage points for the landlord in these situations? just reverse the leverage points for the tenant. You know, it's a leverage point for the landlord that you've got a personal guarantee against uh, somebody with deep pockets. All right, there's lots of variables in these situations. Uh, this, this video does not tell you everything you need to know about it. A lot of you watching this are smart cookies. You'll be able to figure it out. Uh, but even if you're a smart cookie, then there's the writing up the solution. We would like to think that we were good at that. And then the other thing is, is that this is a strange process uh, for some people that might need a coach, that might need help with the negotiations. We try and educate you to how to handle the negotiations as much as possible on your own. Keep us invisible until you need to write up something. Keep us in mind if you're in one of these situations. And remember, we live in a complicated world. Be careful out there. Thanks for watching this far.